you know, one of the things that is going to be an issue for Christians in the next few years, if not for a long time, is how do we demonstrate that we're not just idiots when many of us behave as if we're idiots and have an immature faith and are swept about by every wind of doctrine. But some people, I was reading an article today on an ABC News site, and they say that obviously Christians are subject to conspiracy theories and believing things that are false, UFOs and anything weird, because their faith is weird. They don't have any rational basis for what they believe to begin with, and so why not believe anything that comes down the pike? Now, that's, it sounds rude and anti-Christian, but you got to give that criticism credit. That's how we're living. We're living as if there's no distinction between faith and credulity or gullibility or believing anything we're sold. There's one verse in particular today that I wanted to look at, and that's 1 Timothy 4, 7, and it ties into what I'm saying. Paul, throughout this entire letter, is talking to Timothy. Paul is Timothy's mentor. He has led him in the faith. Timothy is being raised. He's a younger man to become a kind of bishop or apostle or a Christian leader. And, and one of the things he's urged to do here Timothy is to have nothing to do with godless myths and old wives' tales. Rather, train yourself to be godly. In the next verse, for physical exercise is of limited value, but godliness is valuable in every way. Paul continues on that vein because the word, the Greek word he uses for train yourself to be godly is related to the word that you would use for physical exercise or the kind of discipline to get in shape. If you were to train for a marathon or to compete in a sport, that kind of discipline is the same sort of discipline that Paul is suggesting that Timothy adopt so that he can be a leader in the faith. And at the same time, he is to turn away from silly myths and old wives' tales. The word in Greek indicates things that old women believe. Now, this is not necessarily sexist because old men can believe foolish things too. But the tradition is silly old women who gossip. The commentary in Bible Hub suggests perhaps that Paul is also saying, don't indulge in fruitless studies of the scriptures that are based upon mere myth and conjecture, kind of like endless genealogies, which he cautions against elsewhere. Um, also, though, it's probably tied into his warning against these heresies, these early Gnostic heresies, which he refers to earlier in this chapter of uh, 1 Timothy, the heresies that tell you you cannot marry and you have to eat certain things and not eat other things. Paul is pretty much saying no. In other words, we're going to focus on the truth here. And that's the big distinction. Is it true? Because if none of this is true, we might as well burn down all the churches. We're not in this for... It's not an opiate of the masses for us. It shouldn't be. It's not, it's not shallow comfort. For one thing, the faith should be challenging as much as it is comforting. But we shouldn't be involved in this because... Our Christian faith is no different from an old wives' tale or a silly fable. And that might be a difficult distinction for you to defend, especially if you don't understand it yourself. Paul is talking to you and me when he's talking to Timothy. He's saying, have nothing to do, students, with godless myths and old wives' tales. In other words, don't put your faith in them. He's not saying don't study mythology. He's saying, don't believe the nonsense. Rather, train yourselves to be godly. Discipline yourselves, not just for the knowledge of the faith, but to be godly. To properly worship, to properly live as a Christian in love for your fellow man and for God. That requires discipline and training and self-sacrifice and not being open to every idiotic 
story that comes down the pike. I'm amazed that it, it had become a thing and still is for devout Christians to go crazy about multi-level marketing, which multi-level marketing is a scam. And for us to buy into stuff like that, no wonder we buy into bizarre theories about lizard people or UFOs or fill in the blank because we haven't disciplined ourselves to turn away from the nonsense and study what is true and try to sift out what is true from what is not true. As Jesus says in the reading from Mark for today, what you measure will be measured back to you. Listen, pay attention, because if, you, if you're not measured in your approach to what you believe, you will be overcome and you will, you will get what you give. If you approach all of this as if it's nothing different than just a way to believe and a way to join your friends and a banner to carry, hey, I'm a Christian, and I believe whatever, I believe what I hear from the pulpit or what I hear from these internet folk that I watch who claim to be good Catholics, I believe what they say. If you're like that, you're gonna be a terrible witness for the truth because people have agendas and they're trying to fool you mostly because it fattens their wallet or gives them more power. So you've got to be discerning and you have to use discipline to become godly. That's what Paul is saying to Timothy and that's what he's saying to us.